you've probably been in a situation where you just started out as a new junior developer or when you just move jobs, you just switch to another company where you need to understand an existing large complex, maybe even code base. You would need to onboard yourself, be able to do work on it. How do you approach this? What would you do? Have you been told to read all the documentation and look at the architecture diagrams and then get on with it only to leave you confused or not, not able to really have insight and understanding into the structure of the code base, how it all works together? I'm not a huge fan of documentation. And if there isn't any, then what? Read all the source code? That's not a very fun task. It's very time consuming and it's actually very difficult to get the purpose out of just reading code to understand why things are happening, to understand how it is structured and why it is structured that way. That is what insight into a code base is. You cannot get that simply by only reading the code. You need to get a bigger picture. In this video, I'll talk about the five levels of understanding code. Let's get into it. Level one, purpose. What is the value of the software? Why do people work with this? What problem does it solve for them? Figure out how the software is typically used. Maybe you can get a demo from a UX designer or a tester or a product owner, somebody who can explain to you, this is what the user usually does. They can probably tell you more about specific use cases. Maybe there's multiple use cases. Maybe there's even personas, which is a deliverable that an interaction designer or a UX designer may have made. Like we have these three types of users here. Figure out what the most important part of the software is from a user's perspective. This thing is absolutely must work at all times. And if we don't, if, if this is not there, then it's down and the service level agreement is broken and users will start complaining as opposed to this other part, which is clearly optional. Some, some software has this kind of thing, figure out what it is. If you have trouble getting an in-person demonstration of the software, maybe there's other documentation intended for users, not for developers. Maybe there's a training video. This is how you would use the software that we actually send to clients. This is something you could simply watch. Then figure out what the nature of the software is. Is it CRUD style? So CRUD is create, read, update, delete. User generated content, stuff that gets entered by the user, stored in a database. Then they can edit the stuff that's in the database or they can delete stuff from the database. Most social media or accounting software or stuff like that is, is basically all CRUD software. Lots of software out there is CRUD. Software could also work as a pure function. You give it input, it does some calculation or some processing and you get output from it. That is different from CRUD. You're not storing stuff to get back to it later. No, it's just running some calculation on some input that you give it. Another model is event-based. The client is not inputting anything. It is just receiving things. The server is just pushing notification or data or streaming or whatever. There's This is a completely different model. But lots of software nowadays is also a combination of these models. You could have a CRUD style part of the application, but you could also be able to receive notifications or there could be events flying around all over the place. So worthwhile to understand which part does what. It's also important to figure out how the software is delivered and how frequently it is delivered. Is it an API for internal usage for another team? Is it a UI that is delivered to the user? Is it delivered every day? Is it delivered once a month? Because only then we have this data available that needs to be delivered or something. There's many ways of delivery to the user and there's lessons you can learn from it. Why is this frequency the case? Figuring out the purpose is important. So when in the future you learn all kinds of details about the software and you need to make decisions about it, you can relate these details to the purpose and you can make better decisions about it because you suddenly understand the bigger picture. Level two, tests. I'm a huge fan of good tests, especially when written in test-driven development style, because then they're not good, they're great. If there's a test suite, if there's an acceptance test suite, start there, read this stuff. If there's a, even a smoke test suite, the, the idea of smoke tests is that they're acceptance tests, but only the most important ones, read those first. Again, they're supposed to be a small test suite, so it will take you very little time, but you will understand it from the user's perspective. Any other functional tests or BDD, behavior driven development style tests, maybe they're written in Cucumber specifications, they will help you, they will give you similar insights. And if they're not there, maybe there's functional specs available that you can read from a tester or a product owner. Tests are important because if they're green, they're always up to date, they're working, and they help us understand how success for the user is measured from a technical perspective. So, you know, when the developer, the previous developer was writing this, what it meant for this person to be done. 
now I am done, now I can deliver it to my user, and my users will be happy if I have passed this test. So this is where tests are very, very powerful. From the names or the titles alone, from reading test suites, you should get a lot of understanding. You don't even have to go through all the mocks and the bodies and the implementation of the tests themselves. Level three, data flow. Who has the initiative? Where is data flowing? What part is generating data? What part is responding to data? Are there notifications flowing, which are just a name? Are there massive objects going over a line from one surface to another? Is there, what format is this data? Are there just a few data structures that are being used all over the place in the project? That just a very small number of data structure that are being reused? At this level, you should also get a feel for the structure of the code. So there's folders and files and they have different names. Why do they have these names? Why are these files grouped in this folder? What does this folder name mean? If you don't know these things, you should definitely talk to other developers. You can read some code at this point, but make sure you focus on the interfaces. Fold close the bodies and just look at the names and the inputs and the outputs and where's the coupling, which modules or classes are calling which other modules or classes, where's the dependency. But don't focus on the implementation. If you can only focus on the interface, this will save you a lot of time. Data is important because it's often the reason of existence for the system. Data is often the value that is being delivered to the user, so you better understand it. Level four, architecture or solution design. This is the part where you can read some docs, but be very careful with reading docs at this point. First, try and figure out the, the components. What are the larger things that the system is composed of together? How does data flow from one component to another? And when you start looking at architecture diagrams, especially if they're more complex, uh, microservice architectures, half of the services is only somewhat relevant. Yes, they're there and they make the system more complex, but 80% of the value is being delivered by this one big service, for example. This is very common use case. So don't get bogged down in getting all the parts separately. Make sure you know where to focus. What question do you want answered before you dive into this diagram and try to understand it all? The same is true for documentation. Never read documentation from start to finish. It will cost you a lot of time and you will only get half the insights that are there because you need more detailed context to be able to understand it all, which is kind of defeating the point. I don't like documentation, as I've said so. Before you start reading documentation, try to see, this is the question I want answered, and then search for documentation. But if there's a colleague next to you and he isn't in his focus mode with his headset on, just ping pong with that question quickly. You might save a lot of time. Come up with the question first, then try to find that answer in the documentation. If you can't find it quickly, ask a peer. Before you start reading documentation, it's also important to figure out what parts you're not going to read because they're out of date or they're less important for the question you're trying to answer. Other developers will be able to help. This is really, it's gonna save you a lot of time. If there's no documentation, you should ask another developer to explain the code base, the structure, the architecture to you, which design patterns are used where and why. I personally find that asking another developer for an explanation is actually always a better idea to understand architecture because Documentation is often out of date and there's so much more layers in, in verbal and non-verbal communication compared to just a piece of written text that's usually out of date. Level five, focus on one thing at a time. Step by step, go a bit deeper. An activity I personally like a lot is to read the last five, for example, merge requests of other developers and try to figure out why they did that stuff and then pose questions, especially why questions again. If you understand why certain solutions were chosen, you get to know the context. This is also the moment to start doing things in the code base, to start asking for a small task, to can I fix this small bug? Can I refactor this tiny thing? There's maybe tests that need to be added. There's, there's this whole module that isn't unit tested, or there's this important feature that doesn't have an acceptance test yet. Can you, can you write it for this? There's small features to build. There can be many small tasks that would get you into the weeds of understanding the code. And again, try to first formulate what you, how you want to solve this problem, understand the problem. I have a different video about this if you want to learn more. Then view, review that this ID with a peer, and then you can proceed to actually start typing your solution and writing the code itself. Just start doing some work. You'll be slower than others in the beginning. This is fine. You'll be a lot faster than by just reading, reading all the code or all the docs. That's just a waste of time. Make sure you don't get stuck. If you are on a task for more than 60 minutes, stop immediately. Go, task, go talk to a peer, go figure out what's my next step. Then you can proceed again. 
prefer to do some pair programming. This will also help you greatly in understanding the why, because you have to explain to each other all the time what are you thinking right now. If there's not a pair programming opportunity available, maybe you can pair the review of a merge request. This is also a very common activity that will help you learn a lot. To summarize, don't judge yourself too harshly if this takes a lot of time. The speed at which you understand a code base is not only a function of your ability, it is also a function of the code quality. If there's lots of bad interfaces or no separation of concerns or no modularity, lots of tight coupling, then of course it will take you more time. Of course it will be trial and error. The first 10 things as features you will develop will contain more than average bugs. And that is okay because you have to deal with certain complexity from day one. And if all of this is interconnected, then of course this will yield a more problematic onboarding. This, this is okay. It's not your fault. And also take small steps. You cannot read a code base cover to cover like a book and expect it to all land. It's not linear like a book. Code has all kinds of connections, interconnectivity that you need to understand. You need to go through it layer by layer, so to say. First, the hierarchy, the, the, the purpose, then the architecture, then the details. You need to get to know how the data flows through all that. And only then can you understand how it all works together. Don't read too much docs. Prefer to talk to people instead. This will give you lots more insights and don't spend too much time alone. Start working on something, talk to people, and learn something on the go. And that's it. I hope this was helpful in some way. If you have any thoughts or requests for things you'd like to see, let me know in the comments. Subscribe. Thank you very much for watching.